just love that idea of how do you how do you register time in a painting? My name is Kelly Ordin, and my exhibition at Part Two is called Slow Tide. I think it's really a reflection of my experience last year in 2020, and then also just preparing an exhibition that kind of reflected on the past year. Um, I'm from the Bay Area. I grew up in the Bay Area, live in the Bay Area, and um, so I'm really surrounded by water, whether it's the bay or the ocean, and I spend a lot of time in the water, near the water. And um, I kind of started thinking about tides in the ocean and how it's really this constant and it's really similar to time and life that it just keeps going. Um, you know, it's kind of this unstoppable force. And this past year for me, and I think for a lot of others, has really um, slowed down time in a way. And I think by titling the exhibition Slow Tide, I wanted to kind of think of like a poetic way to talk about how time has really slowed down this past year. Kind of the way that I use these dyes kind of mimic the way a tide um, comes up to the shore and when it comes up to the shore, it kind of leaves this like residue of water that just for a few minutes or seconds, you can kind of see that residue before it like, you know, goes back into the ocean. And somehow the way that I was using the dye was similar, like it was leaving like similar imprints on the paper as a tide. So um, yeah, it was just, it was just very around me, the idea of tides and water and time. I think in the past I was using um, like a coffee dye as more of a background on my work. And so I would actually like apply it with a brush. And this new body of work was me filling up like large buckets and vats of dye by like dipping the paper in there and kind of moving the water around. It was really mimicking like kind of this motion of water and tides and um, yeah, you could, I was really like fascinated by just like how you kind of move water and how it sits on paper and just kind of the residue, which is really just like color and a gradient of color depending on how much time you let it sit in there. For me, it's, I've always really been interested in that juxtaposition between like uncontrolled happenings, my, like organic things that happen just through materials, and then a really controlled hand. And I think the I, for my work, I think I really need both. I almost like separate the work between, um, like there's abstract landscape pieces and then there's abstract geometric pieces. And they're very different in that one is more intentional and another one is more intuitive. And by saying that, I also um, think one is more of like work done in like an active state and one is work done in more of like a, I guess, meditational or quiet state. And those abstract geometric pieces fall into that meditational state. And a lot of time, what I'll do is I'll, the composition will be like already figured out and set. And then it's really just a matter of me actually like doing the work and kind of repeating this line over and over and over. And a lot of times those lines are four or five um, layers of paint. And for me, it's really a way just to like slow down, be in like a quiet place, and really just concentrate on the work being made. The landscape-based pieces definitely have more like a natural color palette. So there'll be blues, whites, um, grays, a little bit of red, um, greens, but very like more earth tones. Um, whereas the geometric pieces, those like really give me an excuse to play around more with color. So it will be like bright pinks, teals, turquoises, blues, much more like, I want to say like uplifting, happy, bright colors. Um, I'm also very influenced by like sports gear and sports wear. So like certain like tennis shoes and, um, just colors that are used that are really bright. And um, I've never been interested in like painting a painting and showing it to a viewer and it being like, this is what this painting is. It's, it's more interesting for me to like 
show something to somebody and have them really like search their own like memories or experiences and have them decide what the painting is. Um, I just like giving that control over to the viewer. So I think in that sense for me, it becomes an abstract work just by not controlling the image so much that I'm deciding exactly what, where it is.